that based on our genetics and partly our diet, certain bodies have the potential to store fat in their fat cells to varying levels. As long as you can continue to store fat in fat cells, the body stays metabolically sound. And that it's once the fat cells start to reach a point of maximum dimension, and by that I mean every individual fat cell is getting too big, now the body has reached its threshold. And if insulin is attempting to still tell the body to store energy, now you have a war, a metabolic mutiny, um, where the fat cell starts to rebel. We gain fat through two different processes. Because of our unique ethnicity and the genetics that um, uh, come with that, some of my weight gain, potentially, would have happened through some modest degree of hyperplasia, where when my fat cells started to get a little big, I would simply create some new fat cells. Whereas, Drew, with South Asian ethnicity, your fat cells, you have a very limited potential for hyperplasia. In other words, you're not going to multiply your fat cells. The number of fat cells is pretty set. But what, so then what happens is the fat cells each just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So each fat cell is carrying a bigger metabolic load than, than, than it would, than it would normally. Whereas again, in another body that can undergo hyperplasia, the fat cell gets a little big and it recruits a new fat cell, which gets a little big. So more important than the mass of fat we have on our body is the size of each individual fat cell. When the fat cell gets really, really big, uh, two problems start to happen. One, it starts to reach a point of maximum dimension that it can't grow anymore. Otherwise, the cell membrane starts to lose its integrity and literally start to pop, which would be a very messy inflame, inflammatory process. And at the at second, the fat cell, as it's swollen up to 10 or 20 times bigger than it used to be, is now um, suffocating. It's getting too pushed too far from capillaries. In other words, blood vessels where it can get oxygen and give it CO2 and get nutrients. So the fat cell starts to get too big and it starts to suffocate. When the fat cell starts to get so big, it starts to tell insulin, insulin, you are trying to make me big and yet I can't grow anymore. And so while you are trying to block me from breaking down my fat, I'm not listening and I'm going to start leaking fats. To say that in a more precise term, insulin normally inhibits lipolysis, which is the term for breaking down fat. That's one of, that's the primary mechanism whereby insulin promotes the growth of a fat cell, not necessarily force feeding it, but preventing it from breaking it down. Um, so the fat cell says insulin, fats are still coming in or glucose is still coming in, but now I'm going to start breaking down fat, even though you're trying to tell me not to. So one, the fat cell, the hypertrophic or swollen fat cell becomes insulin resistant to prevent further growth, leaking free fatty acids into the blood in the midst of elevated insulin. And those two things should not be high at the same time. High insulin and high free fatty acids now means you're going to start storing fat in other places. Um, throughout the body, most especially the liver, getting fatty liver and, and excess fat in the pancreas, creating insulin resistance in those tissues. But the second problem, as I mentioned, is that the fat cell becomes uh, hypoxic. It starts to suffocate, if you will, as it's gotten pushed too far from the capillary. The fat cell has a potential solution for that too, and that is by secreting a bunch of pro-inflammatory cytokines into the bloodstream. So the hypertrophic fat cell becomes very pro-inflammatory because some of those cytokines that it's secreting have the ability to promote the growth of new capillaries. And so it starts to correct its hypoxia by stimulating the growth of new fat cells, which is a better outcome than suffocating and becoming necrotic. You know, once again, a very messy, prone, uh, inflamed death.